Hey guys, this is Rick from Excel Gorilla, and in this video, I will have a look with you at grouping or binning in Power BI. Let's get to it. So, in this video, together with you, I'd like to have a look at how to create groups or how to create bins in Power BI. And the first question could be like, why would you want to create a bin or a group? Now, in many reports, if you want to show your sales data, you'll likely want to show it in some way by category or by a certain group. And those groups are not always defined already. And you might want to adjust your data set so it fits your needs. And we're not going to look today at Power Query or DAX, but we're looking at a functionality that's built into Power BI. And an added value here is as well that this is going to be asked on your DA100 or Data Analyst certification from Microsoft. So pick it up and make sure you get ready for your certification. Okay, so why would we want to use these groupings in the first place? Let's imagine we create a chart, just a simple bar chart. This bar chart might look like something like this. I'm going to add the sales value and in the categories I'd like to show. Let's have a look. Yeah, maybe the sales rows. Okay. If I look at my data set first, you're going to see that there's a very simple model. There is a model that shows the customer, the date, and it's all connected to a sales table. When we look at the data, then in the customer table, I have added a column that says sales rows. So how many sales rows are related to a particular customer? That's what this row is saying. Now, if I put the sales rows, so the amount of orders a customer has done, if I put that in a, in a graph, in a bar chart, you're going to see like this, that the people with over 350 orders around that part, those are the customers that are, are found the most in our data set. So there's a lot of customers that do 350 orders and they have quite some sales value here too. Okay. But perhaps, so, so why would we want to use groups in the first place? Now, Looking right now at this picture, we're seeing that we have very detailed data and we might want to put that into different segments. Okay, so let's get into Let's introduce the grouping function then. There's several ways in which you can group your data, but to get started, you go to the data view and let's say we want to create different groups from the sales rows. Now to get started there, you select the sales rows and you go to the contextual tabs that says column tools. And then there's something that says data groups. And then when you click, it says new data groups. Now you'll end up in the pop-up screen as follows. And there's several ways to group here. And the first type of grouping we'll look at is binning. And binning is only available for numerical columns. So text values will not be able to group using the binning group type. Now within the, the grouping type of binning, you can choose the group type size of bins or number of bins. Now let's say we, we know the size of the bins that we want to have. We'd like to see our the amount of orders that the customers do in sections of 50. So our first group could be 0 to 50, the next group 50 to 100 orders, 100 to 150. And if that's the kind of grouping you require, you could just fill in 50. Um, in the top, I'm going to call this sales rows grouping um, size 50 size bins, size of bins 50. And we press OK. Now this will make Power BI look at your data and categorize them in groups of 50. And if we first have a look at the sales rows, you're going to see that the amount of orders that each customer does, the smallest one is 242 orders for the customer. And it goes up to there's a customer that had 455 orders in the sales table. So those are the groupings we're looking at. And then if we look at the, the groupings that we just made by sizes of 50, we're seeing that we have a grouping from 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, and 450. So if we would click on 250, there's only a single line there. Let's, let's pick a bigger group. I think there were a lot of, one of these around the 350 range. And we'll see that our grouping from 350 is actually from 350 till 399. There's lots of customers that fit in there. 
Now, what use does this have? We can go back to the report. And instead of just having the sales rows, the amount of sales rows per customer as a value, we could act as at the bidding size. Okay, so it's a newly calculated column. And if I go down one level, we'll now see that we have these categories that show like, okay, from 200 to 250, there's very little sales, but most sales are in the 350 to 400 range. Very good. Now, maybe this is not exactly the kind of grouping that you would like to see. So if you'd like to change this, we could take a different type of bidding that's also related to numerical columns. So we can go back to the sales rows here. And another way to group your data is to right click on the column and press new group in the bottom of the pane. And in this case, we're still going to take the grouping time bin, but we're selecting number of bins. Now the number of bins is what it suggests. Perhaps you know you want to sort your data in 10 different groups. If that's the case for you, you write down 10 groups. And in this case, I will write number of bins 10. And then pressing OK leads us to get 10 different groups. And as you will see, Power BI even runs the numbers here. So we'll calculate based on your data set, how can I end up at 10 groupings? And then it will really put those bins in an evenly distributed listing. So we now have, let me take the filter off here. And then if we click, we can see we have 10 different categories instead of uh, sizes of 50. Now we go back to the worksheet. We can also add those to the axis. And if we go one level down, we're seeing that we have another uh, selection. And in this case, maybe it's good to put the sales rows in the bottom. So we have a different kind of selection. Most detailed, then we have a grouping of 10, we have a grouping of uh, 50, etc., etc. Um, yeah, so this might be useful for people who don't have access to the underlying data set. They don't know Power Query or they're not too good with Dex then this makes it very easy to create groupings in numerical columns. As I was suggesting, this there's also a, a different category. And in this case, we looked at binning for numerical columns. But let's look at the column postal code. And postal code, it looks at first that there's only numbers here. But if we click on the arrow and we scroll all the way down, you're going to see that in the system, the output for the postal code sometimes includes a non, not available sign here. And since that's text, then the whole column needs to be text. Okay, so this could be a great example to see what we can do with text values. If you go to groupings, you can click new data group. And now the grouping time is mentioned as list. And you can see list as something that's very manual, where you decide manually what groupings you want to make. Now, perhaps it's interesting for you to get, based on the geography, a certain area of postal codes that you want to report on. For example, from 90,000, postal code 90,000 until 9,300, maybe that's your, in your interest to see uh, what groups are in there. So I selected the first value. If you hold the shift button, you can now press the one closest to 300 and click on group. And we can say that Northern region or to make it easy we'll call this 90,000 to 9,300 okay then from 9,300 to 9,600 we'll have our second category 9,300 9,600 and then we'll want one from 9,600 till 9,800 So at this point, we've looked at the data set and all the available data uh, postal codes in the data set have now been grouped. Um, let's see what, what that looks like if we put that in a graph. So we're going to click OK, postal code groups. And we're going to see if we click on the first postal code group, 90,000 to 9,300, that only postal codes within that range have been selected. And if we go back up here, 
we could now say, okay, I'd like to see my postal code groups in the axis. And so here we see it. Most sales are done from postal codes that were between 9300 and 9600. Maybe this is your northern region. And yeah, you could all do all kinds of things with that. For example, maybe you want to look at the amount of orders that have been done. And in the 90,300 postal code to 9600, you can here now see that most customers have done between 350 and 400 orders. So very easily you can create your groups and segments to analyze your data. Now there's one thing that one thing that we didn't look at yet, and it is that there's also a value that says not available. Um, if I take the filter out, so I clear the filter. There is the postal code, and right here in the bottom, you're going to see the value that says none of not available. Now I'd like to catch that in a in a smart way. By the way, if I want to uh, change the postal growth code groups, I could select it, press data groups or pre and press edit data groups. Another way is to go to the grouping. Look, look at the icon here. If you have a grouping that is for text, then you're going to see the squares here on this on the side. And if you like to change those groups, you can press right click and edit groups here as well. So there's flexibility there. Now, back on topic, if we have a look at the different groups that we have been defined, then not, not available is still waiting out here. But to make sure we can catch everything that doesn't fit in our group, and this could be because we have a new customer that has a new postal code, or because there's other values that we haven't grouped, then there is this selection in the bottom that says include other group, and you can use it to make sure that everything that is not grouped will fall into this category. You will click OK. And now when you look at the drop down, there is a section that says other. And it will dynamically adjust as new values come into the sales table, uh, the customer table in this case. OK. Now, it might be that like the disadvantage of what we're doing here with the postal codes is that it is very manual. And if a new postal code appears, for example, let's see what we have. Uh, we see that we have a postal code that says 9005. If we have a postal code that says 9008, uh, like 9006, which doesn't exist yet, then it will not fall into a category that we decided on and will end up in the other category. So if this is too uh, static for you, of course, there's plenty of other ways in which you can use groupings. Uh, one of the go-to ways could, for example, be to add a custom column. And to replicate what we've done here, we might as well use a sales column. Uh, the, the, let's see if we can use the switch formula for this. So if I want to have my postal code groups, I can write this switch true. And then what I could do is calculate on what level my postal codes are. But since this is a text column, we'll have to adjust the value, uh, the, the, the value to convert it to a number. And there is a function index called value for that. So we can choose value, postal code. We have a smaller or equal to 90,300. Then I'd like to call it 90,000 uh, 90, till 9,300. And then let's just copy this text so we can easily use it. paste it so what this formula does is it starts at check it checking for each condition which of the ones are fulfilled first so if the postal code is lower than 90,300 it will return the second value otherwise if it's uh, lower than 9600 it will continue to return the grouping 9300 to 600 and then obviously we still have a category left for the higher ones, 9900. Now, I could press enter now and see what we get, but I know that there is also a text value in here that says not available. So we'll first have to catch that one. 
So if the postal code equals not available, please return the category other. Comma. Okay, let's see what it brings for us. Now, as you can see, the postal code groups that I just created using DAX, using the switch formula, it does the same thing, but it's a bit more dynamic because whenever a new postal code is added, I don't have to manually add it, but the formula will have caught it if it's in between 90,000 and 90,900. So there's different ways to go by it, but it's good to know that there's um, ways in which you can use your the grouping method here to make your groupings as well. So we've looked now at three different methods. So there's two methods for the numerical columns using binning, and there's another one for text values using lists. There is one more variation that I haven't shown yet, and those are mostly relevant to the date columns. So if we go to the date table, you could create groups by clicking on the date, right click new group, and it's still gonna be using binning, uh, in, in a way, a date column is also a numerical column, but you can choose your bin size based on, for example, amount of months or an amount of minutes, amount of days. So if I want to create a bin for every uh, five months, I could just say five, press OK. And let's see. So the first bin that I create is January 2016, uh, January 2013. And then the next one starts in June. So each bin is five months. And if I select, for example, the 1st of June, 2013, then the dates in there are gonna show everything from June until October. So that's the last way in which you can use your grouping. Now, these were some ways in which you can use your grouping functionalities to create your segmentation, create your grouping, and feel free to do it in any way that feels fit for you. Perhaps you're gonna catch this in your database, otherwise Power Query might be a viable option, or uh, in DAX there's lots of options to do it too. But if you're not comfortable with that, and this looked easy to you, of course, feel free to use the grouping. This will also be asked in your uh, DA100 certification in Microsoft, so make sure to pick it up. If you like this video, make sure to like it below, and if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.